For the past two years, these have been my main trail running shoe. These are the La Sportiva Caracal. And basically, a basic down version of what the Crackles are. They're more like a high volume, high cushion fit of the Jackals. Um, they have a slightly, I think, different last, maybe not. Um, but I figure, you know, since I've been using these for about two years and definitely a handful of runs in them and I've done a bunch of hikes, it'd be good to review them. So let's get right into that. So right off the start, I'm just gonna go over some of the specs that La Sportiva has on their website. And then we are gonna go into kind of my like thoughts on them. So like I said, these are kind of more like a high version, like high volume fit, wider fit and more cushion version of the Jackals. Um, it does have a dual density EVA foam, which is much appreciated. And basically what it is, is that this foam right here is a harder foam, whereas this one's more of like a softer and bouncier foam. So that's super nice to have um, just because where this is located, you know, because it is in the heel, it's better for so shock absorption in the heel, whereas you want more rebound in the forefoot. So that's kind of why they did that. Um, it does have a 3D seamed upper. Basically that means that there's no seams on the upper that you'll really feel or you won't feel at all because there is no seams. So that's super nice. You do have a little molded toe cap protection area. Um, trying to see if that, yeah, it's just a toe cap. So that actually comes in handy a lot. Um, it's protect my toes a couple times. And you know, it's other than like the, the Jackal is kind of different from this is this, this one has a padded tongue. The Jackal has like a thinner style tongue that is definitely like bare bones and pretty supportive still where this one just has more of a higher cushion tongue. Um, I thought it was pretty nice. Uh, it does also have a internal gusset. There's a little elastic in there. So you definitely have like that pressure of the tongue going down. So that is definitely nice to have because it keeps the tongue pretty secure. And um, yeah, there also is a molded rock guard on the bottom. This definitely helps and that's kind of also why I kind of went for the shoes. I knew that because there was a rock guard, it should help for protection underfoot. Um, sometimes a lot of these shoes either go the route of like Hoka's where they go really, really high um, cushioning but don't have rock protection. Whereas these kind of find that in between balance of having high amounts of cushioning but also still having a rock plate essentially. Um, that kind of helps just in terms of protection. And I've been on some rocky outputs with these and my feet never got really fatigued really fast. So definitely nice to have the rock plate. Um, as for weight, these shoes are actually pretty lightweight. Um, they have a weight of 290 grams on Sportiva's website. Now that is for like a pen and a half, I think. So just be aware of that of Maybe it's, maybe it's nine and a half, either way, that's a set weight. So whatever shoe size you get might vary, but that's generally where it's supposed to be at. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It has a uh, seven millimeter stack. And the difference is, is that it's 29 millimeters in the heel and then 27 or 22 millimeters in the toe. So you do have that difference of there. So, you know, it's not like a flat foot experience, but they're not overly aggressive as some other shoes are. And that kind of really goes to the specs of the Crackle. Like I did say, it really is just like the Jackal, um, but high, high cushion. Um, but over two seasons, how have they worn? Well, they've worn actually pretty good. Um, I did forget to mention that the bottom of the shoe is Friction X Blue, which is kind of like, I think their durability blend. So um, it's more of a durable rubber compound versus an ultra sticky one. I think Friction White is the ultra sticky one. Then Friction Red is kind of the in-between, whereas Friction Blue is more of the durability um, side. So that's how that kind of works. So you do get that. And yeah, you know, overall these shoes have been performed really well. I had a kind of a rough 
I had a kind of a rough break-in period with these. Um, I size them as all my other shoes I size. I size them in a 44. And for whatever reason, I felt like these ones were really tight. I felt like my toes were at the very end, which was very strange because generally with every other shoe that I've gotten in a 44, I always have like a little bit of space, like a little bit of room. And I kind of found that these were a little bit painful to break in. Um, I definitely had a couple days where I'd be going on some trail runs and I was just like, I don't know about these shoes. Like my toes are touching the edge and whenever I hit like a little rock, like I definitely feel it. So I didn't really know how they would perform. Um, but once I broke them in, they've been pretty comfortable. Um, yeah, they've been pretty comfortable. I've done some longer days in them. I've done some a couple of passes in them and they've worked just fine for that. And you know, they've been a really good kind of like a workhorse shoe. I've done everything from trail runs to long hikes to also training in them. Um, these have kind of taken my place as one of my ideal training shoes with the exception of I've kind of had to move away from them just, just for a little reason. Um, and that actually has to do with the tread. Um, the tread's actually starting to wear down pretty good right here which is to be expected. I mean, this is two years in, like a lot of miles in these shoes. I don't know which, how much exactly, but I've ran a lot in these shoes and um, because I'm a four foot striker, it wears right there. So it's not surprising, um, but I did notice that the lugs right up here are starting to rip and ripping both right up here. And I think a little bit down here and I think on the same it's the same on the other shoe, just a little bit lower. Um, so I've yeah, I've kind of had to move away from these shoes just to the lugs kind of ripping. Um, they're definitely not out of commission just yet um, in my line of shoes, but I've just kind of moved away from them from training. Um, I start to find that with those lugs starting to rip, you get a little bit of that kind of, you're not so sure if you're a little stable underfoot. Um, not that it's a huge deal, but like if you're doing something like a plank or something along the lines of that where you're really on your toes you can kind of feel that slippage it's not big but rather than just constantly using these for running and training and ripping them even more I've kind of like backed up off on them um, so that's what I've kind of done but overall I mean wear is pretty good um, I don't really know like you obviously like these shoes are not going to be as built to last as something like an approach shoe that has like heavy materials, leather, or anything like that. So it's really hard to judge durability as these are really kind of my only example of trail running shoes. I had an old pair of the La Sportiva Wildcats that seemed to do pretty good, um, but I haven't had a pair of Wildcats for a couple of years now. And yeah, like it is hard to say how durable these are because you are seeing places of wear. Um, you can kind of see right here that it's starting to fray right where the laces run over. Um, so that's starting to rip. I do have a hole forming in the back of the heel counter right here. Um, but I mean, I don't really, like I said, I don't really know how, where to judge them. Because again, these are two years of use and they've held up really good for how hard I've been pushing them. So it really is kind of hard to have that scale of whether these are performing at a high level still or whether they're starting to degrade. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall performance was really nice with these. Um, I might look at a different type of shoe going forward. Um, I definitely noticed that because of the higher increase of foam in your stack height, I noticed a little bit of instability. Um, I definitely started figuring out towards the later end of the life of these shoes that you just had to get a step a certain way or be aware of how you're running um, but I definitely like a little bit more stable shoe personally um, I mean this is someone who doesn't mind running in the equilibriums which are a boot but I like the stiffness and I like the support you get and these shoes well they're good they're definitely you know not as stable i mean with that increase of foam height so you had that little bit of instability but 
because they are kind of like a higher volume shoe, which is kind of weird because a lot of Sportiva shoes aren't really high volume. I found that this one was just a little bit more wide, but I actually kind of can see how it's considered uh, high volume just because how far up the mesh actually goes. Um, makes it hard to get a total lock down on the laces. Um, it's not incredibly hard to do, but I found myself relying on the second eyelet right here doing a, a runner's lace lock to keep it locked down on my ankle. But I definitely could tell that right around here and in the toes, like it wasn't as tight and it was, it was kind of sloppy. So yeah, they're just, in terms of stability, are they the best? I don't know if they are. Um, personally, I think, like I said, other shoes would do better. Maybe like the Wildcats or I think the Akasha 2s. Um, I think both of those are more of a stable platform shoe, whereas these are more of your general use, which is what they were meant for. Um, they were meant for like longer days and kind of recovery runs in that aspect. So it makes sense that they're not this ultra performing technical stable shoe because they weren't really built for that. So it does kind of make sense at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, so like I said, these are the La Sportiva Crackles. Um, so far, I really, I've been enjoying them, um, but there are definitely some things that I wish were different and I might just find that with a different style of shoe. And yeah, you know, after two years, they are still in pretty good condition. Like I'll still continue to use these and probably until the tread's gone, um, which might be sooner than later. Um, but yeah, they, you know, overall they've been a pretty good shoe. I've been pretty happy with them. They've gotten me to a lot of places and I've definitely had less foot fatigue than like trying to run in approach shoes. So going with that aspect, they've been doing pretty good. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions about the shoes, um, feel free to comment. I know I probably didn't get to everything. As kind of like I said, I don't really know how to really gauge in rank trail running shoes because I haven't really done it before. Approach shoes, I can do that. Trail running shoes, I'm kind of new to it. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to get to it and I'll try to answer it as soon as possible. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.